I'm Larry G. McGuire from The Prosperous Tradesman and uh, LarryGMcGuire.com. I've asked Andy on tonight. Andy Black is uh, AdWords expert, data analyst, and uh, supreme nerd, uh, much like myself. And uh, he's um, got a lot of experience in managing AdWords campaigns and training people up. Uh, maybe you can just give us a little bit of your background, Andy, just for the benefit of people um, watching in. Yeah, okay. I mean, so I was in IT for 15 years, so that's the geeky, nerdy background. And then in 2009, I decided to help my one of my friends who was an electrician, and he had no work. His, his job, had, his work had dried up back in 2009. He gave his, had to hand his van back. So I wanted to learn how to build websites. So I built the website, got him ranked top for Kildare Electrician. Kildare is the county we live in. And he, he had no phone calls. And then an AdWords voucher fell out of the book. This is in 2009. I was like, oh, okay. So we, I threw the AdWords voucher in, and a few days later, he had his first phone call. I remember him ringing me saying, Andy, I've had a phone call. It's working. And I was, like, amazed. And he was – the relief and hope in his voice was amazing because he was he's like a married man with two kids and a, a baby on the way, and he'd have to hand his van back as an electrician. So he's got going, and he's been, he's been grand ever since. It's been great. And since then, I, I really got into AdWords, and I worked for a company – there was a team of 35 AdWords specialists, and I was their analyst. And they were spending 120,000 euros a day on traffic and buying a million clicks a day. So there was a lot to analyze, a lot going on there. Uh, I led the team. I, hmm? That's that, that's mind-boggling. That, that's it is mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling, even to this day, thinking back spend, about it. Spending 120 grand on AdWords. Yeah. How were they making money? Uh, they were making money mostly it was people hitting the page and clicking on ads to leave so it was right. dubious it's not really my thing I, it was quite it was interesting for me to see that you didn't really need in fact in a way the uglier the landing page the uglier the page of people landing on mm. the better it worked because people clicked on ads to leave um, but for me it was like more what works with that was when you're buying a million clicks a day, you get to yeah. test lots of different things. You get to see patterns and what works and what doesn't and try lots of different things. Um, at one point, I led that team, which was quite an interesting role. But I, I, I realized I preferred being at the coalface and doing the work. Um, from, from that company, I moved on to another company where we built 120 million keywords and ads to, you know, just mental. Like four, a team of four of us, we built loads of them and managed to acquire 15,000 signups a day of people looking for jobs in you know in every city in the English speaking world and like every type of job that you could think of then I worked for a company that had a call center in the UK for tradesmen anybody looking for wind repairs electricians plumbers locksmiths pest control you name it uh, we were trying to get drive calls to the call center um, I've also worked I'm working for a company in Ireland for, like, for the, the largest insurance broker in Ireland for like car insurance home insurance travel insurance and things like that um, then I also worked for one of the really really big large daily deals websites um, contracted into there helping them and again spending you know six seven figures a day on AdWords and but really my soft spot is for people like myself like I'm a one-man band uh, yeah. only just recently started building a team um, a team out but I've been a one-man band for 15 years a yeah. contractor an IT contractor now an AdWords contractor so my soft spot is for people like myself just yeah. trying to get going or like my brother-in-law relate, relate relate to where they're at I suppose absolutely yeah, absolutely because I, I, I know what it's like to sometimes mm. wonder how I can pay the mortgage next month yeah. and what I did for my brother-in-law um, you know just giving the hope or like a few phone calls and he just suddenly you know i'd opened it up for him like he was staring into the abyss back then in 2009 and then yeah. all of a sudden you know he's got an opportunity the, the economy had fallen off the edge of a cliff pretty much yeah exactly so i gave him a lifeline and whilst i have some contracts with big companies i, I actually have lots of little ones like i've dealt with like uh, yeah. wedding planners in miami nutritionists in sydney carpet cleaners in brisbane uh, solicitors in Oxford, uh, window repairs in Dublin. So my speciality is actually um, local service businesses, I guess, and tradespeople who cover a sort of a, a location. So Mary, you're saying that you you sell ke uh, Celtic wedding rings, maybe throughout the whole of the US. That's that's quite a tough 
thing to do because you're up against anybody else in the US who sells across the whole of the US. You know, it is doable. Um, what I, my preference, pers like I, I prefer to try and find some, like a, a funeral director in Edinburgh or a nutritionist in Bristol or a tax attorney in Chicago and try and win in their little local market against weaker competition. Because when you go, when you do an e-commerce across a whole country, all you need is 10 good advertisers across the whole country and you've got a very competitive set of ads on AdWords. But you're going to be paying essentially, if you're, if you're in competition, let's say nationally in the UK or in the States is a huge market, you're going yeah. to be paying a lot more for your clicks than you would if you focused on one particular, let's say, city in the UK or the US. Would that be right? Um, it, could, it could be. It depends how you do it. Depends how you do it. Right. Often, like a tactical we use if somebody does cover the whole of the US and they provide a service across the whole of the US, I may create 50 campaigns, one for each state. Right. And then in the actual ad, it will say car hire brackets TX for Texas. And then the ad for New York will be NY. So right. the ad then becomes specific to the fact that you're in that state. And it just gets a better click through rate. More people click on the ad because it looks more relevant than for the competitors. And then you maybe how important is that the 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 actual focus geographical location when you're building when 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 you're building an ad an ad campaign? Even uh, it's very it's obviously very important because like if if you're not targeting a particular country and there's settings in actually AdWords again we've gone deep dive straight into the techie stuff yeah. um, where you might say I I want to target all all the people in the UK like, you don't want to if you can't provide the service to people in Germany, like English speakers in Germany, then you shouldn't be targeting Germany, obviously, because anybody kicks in your ad there is is wasted spend. So you would you'd set the, the campaign up to just target people in, in the UK, obviously, because that's 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 your market. If you only target people in Dublin, then you set your campaign just to target people in Dublin. So that's one of the first things you've got to set up in your campaign is right. to make sure and in your own head you've got to work out where your market is and not try and get people uh, wasting you know, waste spend if you if you get clicks from people outside of your market so that's kind of one issue that you, you would would you tend to find that a lot then when you're taking over campaigns and, and accounts for people no that one i wouldn't most people do target the location mm -hmm. but there's another setting in the accounts that so if you're a, doing window repairs in dublin and you target just dublin for people yeah. looking for window repairs then you might have in your account window repairs dublin anybody might you might type in window repairs dublin as your keyword you want your ad to show and you've set your campaign up so it only targets dublin mm. but google has another setting where they'll say oh so there's i think there's two or three dublins in the us so if somebody looks for window repairs dublin in the us mm. google has the option to say, oh, hold on, you've got that in your account, Dublin. I know you said you just want to get like Dublin or just Ireland, but it's the same place. Oh, we're going to show your ad over in, in the US, and you don't want that to happen. And there's a little setting that you have to actually change okay. from the default to prevent Google from doing that. And I've seen, I've seen it where we were losing five percent of our, you know, five percent of our spend was outside, was for city names outside the UK, right. like in India. Or somewhere because they've got the very, you know, got the same yeah. city names. Yeah. There might be a York somewhere. Mm -hmm. So window repair to York. Somebody in India was typing that in and clicking on it. And obviously, that's just an example. Yeah, I wasn't um, aware of that. Now. It's not. Yeah. So there's, there's a bit of bleed. There's a bit of bleed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, you want to check that, and you want to ch change that default setting. Um, if anybody's interested, we, you know work out how to just document all this and make it available um yeah. so, but, right okay so that's something i'll find in the account and change but whenever i have to do an audit account the very first thing i go looking at is the search terms and the search terms are what people type in to google when they're actually doing a search and when they right so we bid on keywords in the account this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make i think it's probably the biggest mistake people make with right. AdWords, is right. that they call what people type into Google a keyword. Right. Because all the SEO guys, they're saying, yeah. right, we, we rank top for this keyword, like car insurance, yeah. Yeah. Dublin. 
we rank top for that keyword. That's what the SEO guys are talking about. Right. AdWords, AdWords guys, if they're talking in the same way, they're just they're a bit confused and they're right. likely to make a big mistake. And the right. average show blogs he goes in to run his own account is mm-hmm. gonna is gonna just gonna be bleeding money left, right, and center. Tell if us they a call, more about that. Tell us a little yeah, bit more about the difference. Because what they type in, if you call what they type in a keyword, you're gonna confuse yourself. What they type in is a search term. Okay. If somebody types in what's the best car insurance in Dublin, that is their search term. Your keyword is what you bid on, and it might match that. And the keyword you might bid on might be car insurance in broad match. So that search term might get matched by that keyword, but right. that keyword matches a set of search terms, a lot of searches. Right. So, for instance, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. like I've seen, to give you an example of how badly wrong this can go, I was mm. looking at an account um, when I was in that big team, and somebody was bidding on London in broad match. Right, so this is the key. This is the keyword. The keyword was London, and it was in broad match. And the ad was London hotels. Find a London hotel here. Yeah. Now, what that means what means is Google could have shown the ad for anybody typing in anything related to London, like London hotels. That would be great. But London taxis, things to do in London, um, you know, nightlife London. Mm. Uh, but because it was also in broad match, and there's different match types in Google, yeah. it meant Google didn't even have to have the word London in the search term to match our right. keyword with it. Right. And when I looked in the search terms, the things people typed in, gotcha. right? if they type something in and click on our ad, we get to see the search term. If they don't click on the ad, we might not see what the search term is. Right, okay. okay. So we get to see the search term. And when I looked through the account, I went, okay, look, Look at these search terms. You're you're bidding on London as a keyword. Let, let me let me let, let's just get this right. Right. Yeah. Keyword is what you tell Google you want your ad to appear for. Right. Yeah. And the search term is what Joe Blogs types into the Google search, which might, to some degree or another, vary or or to vary uh, be a variance on the keyword that you selected. Is that right? Absolutely. Complete. That's exactly spot on. So, so you I, I might Google. Um, give, me, give me that example again because I know there's people that, this is, the, that, this is that. the biggest boo-boo that everyone makes and it's down to the fact that they don't differentiate between calling it a search term and a keyword they call that a keyword and they enter a keyword in the account and they think it's the same and they're not the same okay. so the really really the best example I've got of how it can be incredibly wrong you've been in London in broad match there's different match types and we, in broad match it means oh anything related to this word yeah. And we saw search terms, and three search terms that stood out the most were British Army. Mm. So somebody typed in British Army, saw an ad for London hotels, and clicked on it, and we saw that search term. So that's Google going really broad. Yeah. That's yeah. Certainly- another, another, another one was UK sexy girls. We were like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what they think they're, they're searching for. We'll leave that one. And then the final one that I, we spotted, was the worst it was like YouTube. Right. So somebody typed in YouTube, mm. our ad for London Hotel show, they actually clicked on it. So that's how we found out that that's what they typed in. Right. And all we could think of was there's a tube in London. That's what we call the underground, the tube. That's square. So okay. broad match really is like steer clear of broad match, in other words. Yeah. 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 If you if you don't know what you're doing, steer clear of broad match. Right. If you're getting started, look with it like anything the only way you're going to learn with AdWords mm. is to actually dip your hand in your pocket, is actually have a go. You can read as many books as you want. It's not until you actually have a go that then you go back to the first page of the book and go, right, now I get it. Now I know why I said that. Yeah, okay, so you need, you need to get started. You need to get some skin in the game yeah. to actually even start learning, but you've got to do it in such a way that you're not going to lose your shirt. Yeah, yeah. And the first way you're going to lose your shirt is to use broad match keywords and call what people type in a keyword, call that a keyword and think that they match yeah. because they don't. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a thousand visitors to your website in the month. Right. And most of them weren't looking for what you're selling. So that's costing the bread straight away. What I, yeah. what I do is for the benefit of anybody listening in there or watching, um, I'll be producing a podcast based on the show here and I'll include the audio and uh, in the blog post that accompanies the, the episode, I'll include little 
I'll include links and I'll include your point, the points, the key points that you're making here, so people can refer back to it and maybe read a little bit more on it. Because I know. Yeah. Yeah. I've only just spotted myself the questions. I'm sorry. Right. So I can answer Greg. Greg Thorpe, you're asking what is the setting called? Uh, it's the advanced location settings. All right. So there's three options. Mm. I will. Right. In Larry's blog post that he's going to create, I will do a little screenshot and show exactly what it is. Right. We'll put it into there, but it's the advanced uh, location settings. You click on it, and you get the advanced ones, and by default, it's the top one. You want it to be the second one, where it's exclude people outside the IP address I've picked. Okay. But outside of Ireland, I've picked Ireland. No, I don't want anyone outside of Ireland to see my app. You just confirm it to Google, because Google will go, oh, look, there's a Dublin in the US. You yeah. sure you don't want your ad shown for them? Yeah. I wonder how many clicks are uh, many. 50 cents or one dollars or even ten dollar clicks um are going into google's bank account for that because of that yeah. said, probably a lot yeah a lot yeah it took me working in a company where like i said we were targeting people mm. it should have been uk and we from the actual platform they were going look we're getting loads of people from outside the uk signing up right yeah. but we got the setting set to the uk and then we investigated and found mm. oh right okay Okay. It's, it's because of the name of the city is the same as mm. okay and then we found that second and turned it off and then it tidied it up and but we reckon we were losing maybe five percent of spend right. just being bled and okay. you're not aware of it yeah but i mean that's a, that's like that's quite a small thing i wouldn't look it's a setting you change right at the start the biggest yeah. mistake i see when i look into accounts and every adwords consultant who looks into an account sees pretty much the same one if it's been set up by somebody who isn't doing okay. this full time for a living. Have the background is, information maybe that you, you guys have, yeah. Yeah, it's it's too much broad match. That's the number one thing. You look at the account and you look at the search terms and any business owner who's running AdWords at the minute who hasn't looked at his search terms, go to the keywords tab and click at the search terms just below it. Yeah. And set it for the last thirty days or whatever it is and then sort by cost and you'll see all the search terms ordered by cost that you're spending money on. And then look at them and go, right. Do I really want to show for that? And th yeah. I did this last week with a guy. Um, we just had a quick Skype call. I looked over his shoulder. I talked to him. I said, gotcha. click on keywords, search terms. And then he was like, what is this? What? what? And I said, right, um, click on columns, unhide the keyword. Mm -hmm. uh, Google hides it from you. Column. Now now you can see that that key search term matched that keyword. And he's like, that's really tenuous, isn't it? I said, yeah, because you're using broad match. Right. But you didn't want to show for that. There was at least 12, 13% spend right. was that's rubbish. That can be a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Absolutely. And what yeah. that means when you're is, tight and, and you're, you, you, you want to get as many clicks as you can, you know what I mean? So like, if, you, if you're picking a small business, a small business owner, maybe, um, I don't know, typical small business owners probably spending between 500 and a grand. Would that be right, a month on, on, on uh, AdWords? Yeah, often. I mean, sometimes smaller, sometimes smaller, three, 400 as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, you said something, as, you just said something, I'm going to pick up on it because also that's what people are thinking about. They're trying to get as many clicks as possible. Right. You're not trying to get as many clicks as possible. Imagine you're, yeah. Yeah. it's okay. like you don't want as many phone calls as possible. Yeah, because if you're got your head in a washing machine, fix it, and it keeps ringing. Somebody looking for insurance. Like, no, no, you just want people. Look, I need a washing right. machine. You want, right. yeah, you want the. You only want. It's the same with people getting to your website. It's not how many visitors do they did I get, and yeah. it's almost like often a business owner might involve me. I should refine what he said and say. Uh, uh, those business owners are looking for the highest number of quality clicks that they can get yeah. for, their, for, their, for their investment. Yes. yes. Put it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, right, it's not about, I hate it when people talk about traffic. It's like traffic. What is that? That's like cars on the road. It's not traffic. Yeah. It, and it's not really even clicks. When we talk about clicks, we want more clicks. No, no, no. They're visitors. They're people hitting yes. your page because they want something. And if they've hit your page and they're, what they're looking for is not actually on your page because you've got the wrong visitor, you know, the wrong keyword and they yeah. just clicked your ad, that's just a wasted spend for you and it's wasted for them. And one of the other problems that like, business owners I see, and I think this is a symptom, 
is that they are thinking of clicks. They're not thinking of people. Right. And when they start thinking of people, they right. go, hold on. If somebody's looking for window repairs, what, what does, if someone types in window repairs, they might be looking for somebody local to fix it, or yeah. they might be trying to find out how to do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah, they might be looking for like information about how to fix a window or a YouTube video. We yes. don't know. Right. When they type in window repairs Dublin, when they put a location yeah, in the yeah. search term, yeah. it says a lot. They're it? Like, yeah, they're likely right. So a lot of business would be like, oh no, no. If someone types in window repairs, we want them to get into the page. And if they type in um, make some windows, we want them to get into the page. And I'm like, yeah, but no, they might be. You want them to ring you because you're going to go out to repair the window. Yeah. Why don't you start with window repairs Dublin? Window repairs, Rath Mines as a place in Dublin. Window repair stores. All the edit, take, type, right, bid on keywords that contain a location in it. Yes. Only you only want people with, who have a location in their search to right. arrive on your page. Yeah. yeah. Right. So what that will do? Okay. So if I take over an account, what will typically happen the next week? Um, and you, you'll see it for the weeks going forward and the weeks previously. The difference will be. I will have a lot less impressions. The ads will have shown less often because I'm much tighter about what I'm showing yeah. for. Yeah. I will have less clicks, but my click-through rate will be 10 times as much. Instead of 1%, it will be 10% or something like that because okay. I'm not show my ad is not showing for somebody looking for, you know, British Army and I've got a London hotel. The click-through rate on that ad, because it showed for loads of junk, was rubbish. Mm. If I'm just showing for people who type in, window repairs Dublin, and my ad is window repairs Dublin, I'm going to have a good click-through rate. Yeah. Okay, so... so this is more mentality on... on, on yeah, the and what will end up happening is my cost per click will be higher. Yeah. And that sounds terrible. It's like, no, I don't want to pay more cost per click. No, no. These people are the right people. They're going to convert into a sale, Yeah. so you want more of them, so we'll bid higher, get into top ad position if we can, yes. and get... So we'll, we'll have less keywords. So if we're thinking about a funnel, a classic sales funnel, right, everyone starts like that, really wide. We want more, we want more, we want more. And, you're like, and I go, no, no, no. You want really tight and you yeah. want more of that. Yeah. Okay? You want yeah. more of the stuff that's going to convert. Yes. Get rid of all the junk. And that's pretty much the first thing I'll okay. like, the first thing I go looking for in the account mm. is at the search terms. Get the business owners to look at them. They have a panic attack. I yeah. can see they've got a bleeding neck all of a sudden. I'm like, this is where all my money's going. Right, let's cut. Bang, bang, bang. Get rid of all that. If you're a local yeah. service business, get rid of any search term. You do not want to show for any search term that's not going to contain a location. Okay. Start with there. Actually, okay. back up one. Right, so if you're brand new to AdWords and not got anything started, yeah. the very first thing you should start with is bidding on your own brand name. Brand name. Okay. So... Larry Maguire, uh, what, what was the company name that you had when you were doing security alarm Elite installations? Security. Elite. What was it called? Elite Security. All right, Elite Security. So a repeat business. So somebody's moved from one property to the next, and I'm like, oh, God, who are them guys who put these alarms in last place? We need them again. Elite Security. Let's go and Google for them. If they can't find you when they – like, they, they're, they're going to ring you and immediately buy from you. Because it's repeat business. Yeah. If they can't find you, that's just that's terrible. Yeah. And also, what if they, somebody says, oh, um, I need somebody who's, can you recommend somebody who does security alarms? Who's good? They go, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, Elite Security did that. They're really good. Oh, okay. Do you have their number? No, I don't. Oh, let me Google them. So they Google that's for your brand name. name. That's happened before. I'd, uh, we were doing some home automation. We did a lot of home automation um, up until, I don't know, maybe three, four or five years ago or whatever. But... Uh, there were, I would not all the time, but frequently enough, get people ringing me thinking that we were someone else, or thinking that we were a company that did the original installation. Because, uh, and now that you're, you you bring that up, it was probably because they were googling um, who they who they thought they wanted wanted, and they found me through that through that yeah. search. So yeah. I guess that probably happens a bit. Yeah, uh, it happens a lot. There'll be a lot of right. So if you've got a brand name that's out there is because you've been in business and doing a good job people right. there's word of mouth referrals and there's repeat business you need to capitalize on that and make sure that you have an ad running even if you're ranked top you know have an ad running the click-through rate on that ad is going to be astronomical by the way greg i've seen a question I'll, I'll i'll come back to that about keywords and ads ad groups 
the click-through rate on your branded search term is going to be through the roof, 50, 60 percent. Your, your cost per click is therefore going to be very low. And what you're also doing is preventing anyone else from putting an ad and bidding on your brand name. So maybe another security company, security alarm installation company, could bid on your brand name, Larry, when you were elite security mm. and start stealing. So people will type in elite security and then click the first ad not even really reading it, and they end up on another page and it's somebody else's security, and they go, oh, okay, I'll go with them. So hijacking your brand, brand name, branded yeah. searches, and all that hard work you've done to build up your brand awareness. So the very, very first thing, if you've got a brand new account hmm. and you've never tried to use AdWords, is bid on your own brand name. Because first of all, you should be doing it anyway you yeah. know, to protect your brand and to make sure that these people do contact you because they're the most likely to convert and also they're going to be the lowest cost per click for you as the brand. Mm. But also for the new account, Google's going to see a massive click through rate and your new account is going to get a good history and a good quality score and all these kind of things. Mm. And it gets you, like I said, you want to, you want to get your skin in the game and yeah. not lose your shirt. Yeah. It's so tight and targeted that you're not going to lose loads of money on it unless you've got a crazy brand name like Best Car Insurance or something like that, in which, you know, yeah. have like those kind of brand names anyway. So um, just to recap so far, we've got three points essentially so far. We have, number one, you've got to find the setting, which we which we will post in the in the article accompanying the recording. Uh, you've got to, you've got to uh, adjust the setting for your uh, geolocation in, the, in your AdWords settings, right? That's first. Yeah. Second thing is... You've got to, well, the third thing, let's go back to the second thing. The third thing is bid on your brand name. What's the second one again? Uh, bid on a brand name, don't use broad match. Oh, broad match, the devil in the yeah. sky. Yeah. yeah, and also don't go, like, we want everything. Yeah. Just okay. start really tight, make that profitable first, then go to the next, right. and then the next, and the next. Don't try and make everything profitable Let's have a from the beginning the question there uh, he's talking about labels uh can we talk about labels i wanted to set up multiple ad groups one for each term but turned out only created an ad group for all keywords right that's another classic is somebody will create an ad group okay i'm assuming people on this call know a bit about adwords because otherwise well right this we've got an account within the account you have a campaigns and a campaign is where you set the IP target in what country you look at, you know, and you, you set your, your schedule, it's nine to five, Monday to Friday, and various other settings. Within the campaign, you might, you, you have an ad group. An ad group is just a logical container. And within that container, you put keywords and ads. Right. So the ad group contains the keywords, and what will often happen is that people put a lot of keywords in an ad group, and then they'll put a lot of ads. Mm. But what happens there is, say you've got 10, and like five ads five ads and 10 keywords yeah somebody might come in on this keyword and then they'll get shown any one of these ads someone else comes in on a different keyword and they get shown any one of these ads okay and someone down here and then you're going oh which is our best ad this is our best ad but it's the best ad for what for what search term that they came in on okay. you've got 10 keywords yeah. matching lots of different search terms maybe there's a hundred different search terms which which is the best ad so I'll give you an example. If, if you're a plumber and you cover Dublin, um, if someone types in plumber Dublin, your ad that says Dublin plumber probably runs pretty good. If someone types in plumber Rath Mines, which is an area within Dublin, an ad that said Rath Mines plumber would run better than Dublin plumber because it's more specific. It's exactly what they matched. Yeah. So what you really need to do is get each search term to have its own actual ad okay and the way to do that is you have like the keyword being very targeted very tight not using broad match okay. but using what using what's called modified broad match put a plus in front of plumber and plus plus in front of rath mines okay so, so any variation of the two is, yeah is they cool. typed in plumber and dublin anywhere on the line it's okay. it's tight enough to keep you out of trouble and it's broad enough to yeah that you don't have to go mad adding loads of keywords okay so you've got someone's typed in Looking for a plumber in Rath Mines. Your keyword is plus plumber plus Rath Mines. Your ad is then Rath Mines plumber in the headline. Right. So you've got the search term and the ad matched. And the only way you can't do that if you have one ad group and you've got all 20 locations, plumber and 20 locations as keywords, and then plumber and 20 locations as your ads. 
because someone might come in for the Rathmines plumber and see an ad for Swords plumber. Someone might come in for Swords plumber and see an ad for Dunleary plumber, other locations. So what you have to do is create one keyword per ad group. Right. Okay, and then in, in that ad group have one ad. Does, one. Greg, do you want to jump in and, and give your spe some specifics of your own situation there and we can, we can answer for you? There's a seat open there. You can just dial in uh, if you wish. Um, might be more of more benefit uh, to you. Well, Greg, did, did, did what I... Oh, there we go. It's coming in. Excellent. Um, is anyone else on who... Did that any, make sense at all? Thanks. Can you hear me? Greg, how's it going, mate? How are you doing, man? Good. Yeah, yeah I, I wanted to um, set up uh, each keyword for... Each, I mean, ad, one ad group for each keyword. Yeah, like you said. But it turned out that I set up just one ad group for all the keywords, and there's only like 26 keywords. I made 26 unique ads for those keywords, and uh, I found myself in a situation how I can resolve this without doing it all over again. I saw the labels, so I added. <laughs> the key the, a labeled keyword to match the ad so my question was is that going now will, the, will that show the correct ad for no the no the, the labels are just there for you to do filters that's right i or, thought that or, might be it too yeah so re really what you should have is i i have a structure that's one keyword per ad group and it's like don't deviate from that if you're going to add, if you've got a new keyword you want to add it into the ad group because that ad looks good for it. No, create a new one, have the same ad for it. So what you need to do is create 26 ad groups and a really nice naming convention is if the, if it's one keyword per ad group, have the ad group name as the same name as the keyword. So if it's Window Repairs Dublin, that's the ad group name, Window Repairs Dublin. If it's Window Repairs Rathmines, it's Window Repairs Rathmines. So you're going to create 26 ad groups. In each of the ad groups, you're going to put the keyword and it might maybe modified broad or exact, which be, I only use modified broad and exact. I don't bother with phrase and don't bother with broad. All right, so you have 26 and right, so there's, there's the ad group. You've got a keyword and you've got an ad and the ad matches perfectly as best you can with that keyword. And you've only got 26, so you can go through and manually do them. If you want to do this at scale, right, so when we load 100, 200,000 a day, Spreadsheet. you're doing it spreadsheet spreadsheet adwords editor yeah. or uh, i write that. little pro yeah i write little programs to generate csv files and we upload them and then you've got other techies and they're even cleverer and they'll use apis to like, whatever but so i gotta do it all over again well yeah, you'll love it yeah. Yeah, because here's here's why you've got 26 once you've worked out how to do 26 you can do 260 it's just as easy yeah once you've worked out how to do it in this using the spreadsheet importing maybe use adwords editor i use most adwords professionals would be using adwords editor which is a google supplied tool mm -hmm. so you can download that it's free and what happens is then you sync it up to your account you you put, suck down from google into your adwords editor the account you edit it in adwords editor which is, means you're editing it on your pc then when you're happy you you export it back up you post it back up so what what you do is you download your account and then you might create a new campaign and then you create an Excel file with your keywords and your ads. You import that into it and it's suddenly an AdWords editor and then you post it up and then you go in and make the campaign settings correct. And this is how, like say, say I get a new client and they cover uh, the whole of the UK for tax attorneys, or something. No, no, tax lawyers, no other attorneys in the UK. I would have a list of 40,000 locations in the UK, every single town and village, and county and everything. And I'll just load the whole lot of them up, like one keyword per ad group. So it'll be tax lawyers, Carlisle, tax lawyers, Newcastle, tax lawyers, one ad group, one keyword, one ad. Right. And right, you're, you're slightly going, oh, no, do I have to learn this? If you do this, you are so far ahead of everyone else you're competing with because they'll be doing it the way you've got it at the minute. And so your ad, when somebody types in tax attorney Chicago, they want to see all three of those words in the headline. Mm. And even for a really expensive search term like that, you'll only find half of them mention Chicago in the ad. And then the other part, I uh, mentioned this to Larry before and showed him that when people then even click on the ad and get to the landing page, they won't see what they're looking for. 
So when you when you've got twenty six with that, great. When you got problem, right? so again, that's another big big problem. Yeah, there's there's three parts to getting an AdWords campaign running right. One is getting the right search terms, then it's getting the right ad for the search term. So one keyword per ad group will help that. Using modified broad match will help that. Not using a broad will definitely help. Is making sure that the search term and the ad match. Then the last piece is to make sure the landing page, the page you send people to, matches. So I call that the holy trinity as a paid search. You've got the search term, lab, ad, and landing page. They all have to match. So if somebody is looking for window repairs in Cork, major city in Ireland, the ad should say Cork window repairs. The landing page that they hit, I like to have a headline of looking for window repairs in Cork, question mark, because I want them to go, yes, I am. <laughs> Or if they're looking for window repairs in Dublin, window, the ad should say Dublin window repairs, landing page should say Dublin window repairs, looking for window repairs in, in Dublin, we're really good, we're in Dublin, of course. So you're 26, without giving away, you don't have to give away your vertical and what you're doing, or maybe you're comfortable doing that, but it might be there's 26 locations that you cover. Well, then each of those ads should state the location and your service, and if you can then do the next part, which is get them to go to a page which actually matches what they typed in. Yeah. So that potentially you've got 26 pages or I've got a sneaky way where you just pass parameters to the page. You make it look like, you, ma you make it match what they were looking for. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I uh, forget the guy's name, but it was, he had a PPC uh, classroom Annex single yeah. years and years ago, and uh, he taught this the spreadsheet option, uh, the spreadsheet yeah. technique to, uh, to have one I'm keyword. Per ad. Yeah, I'm in Excel as often, if not more, than I am in AdWords. So, I'm like, the, okay, that team of 35 AdWords specialists, the top three, five people at running the campaigns were also the top three or five. At, using Excel. Nothing like fancy, no macros or craziness, just knew how to join words together in Excel and then work out what the length was and then make keep it under 25 and still things like that. But I've actually got a video somewhere. I've got a video somewhere, I'll dig it out and link it to in in Larry's post, like where I just, I, it's, it's at full speed. There's no commentary because it would I'll confuse myself, but I just show how to do it. Just so you can see, oh, there you go. It's, it's, I, I just build it from scratch and upload it. Like, I think it's like repairs and like phone repairs, mobile, you know, washing machine repairs. Do, 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 do. I just send it off to the yellow pages. But I just load it and create it and upload it in about seven minutes, mm. I think. So I'll, I'll, load, I'll get that video. If you can work out how to do that, you will be light years ahead of people who, who don't. Because if you've got, if you're for your business, maybe you cover, you know, 100 kilometers or something. And there's loads of different towns and suburbs and villages that you cover. If you could be bidding on every single one of those, you were going to beat the competition. The local lead generation is just so easy it because sounds... nobody else is going to be able to do it. Nobody else will even get it. They'll be like, why are you even doing that? And then it will sound so difficult. Like, I'm not going to do that. And then you go, ah, I do it in Excel. <laughs> just upload them. Yeah, makes sense. One thing I'm, I messed up on is that I did not put the location at the end of the keyword. Since I was targeting a specific location, like on the Jersey Shore, um, yeah. a tight location, I didn't put the like the conservatories, New Jersey. I just put like so sunrooms and conservatories without the location at the end. Yeah, I mean, obviously those can work, but what happens is when somebody types in just sun, uh, sunrooms and conservatories, they're kind of doing research. I like to think of it as they have a cup of coffee next to them and they're doing, they're just looking at all this stuff and they're learning and they're drinking a cup of coffee. And at some point they're going to get more educated and go, you know what? I really, yeah, I actually want to get this done now. And now the search that they type in with a phone in the hand, ready to ring somebody, what is that search? That search is now going to be after a week of typing in conservatories and different types of conservatories and choosing it and go, Oh, should the South face and this, that, what, what do I want? Yeah, I want it now. I want to find somebody to do it. Right. Conservatory, conservatory suppliers, New Jersey, or wherever you said, sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
when they suddenly type in the location, they are a buyer. Yeah. That's a buying keyword. It's not a research keyword. They're not looking for information anymore. They're looking, you know, they're, they're, they're going to shop around probably. But here's an exercise for anybody listening to this or watching the recording afterwards. You type in these searches as a, as a consumer. Type in the searches and look at the Google search results of conservatories and a location. Look at all the ads and see how many of them put the location into the ad. And out of, well, actually, there's not, no longer 10 there. There's four there and four below or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It won't, it, no. But like, it'll be hardly any. And then when you click through on the, the ad that's the best and get to the landing page, I bet you don't even see the location and that thing you were looking for. They'll send you to the home page and you'll be like, hold on, I thought you said you did window repairs in, in Rathmines. I, I can't. You're like all I can see is all these windows. Do you sell them or do you repair them? And so, if you can actually match it, okay. The elephant in the room is that everybody says Google's brilliant, and Google is brilliant at indexing and you know we we're using that instead of the yellow pages. But the but the problem is not Google's problem. It's the advertiser's problem. We're all rubbish at advertising. So that poor old consumer trying to find a locksmith who covers rough mines. And they click on all these ads and they land on the landing page and go, no, I don't know if you're a locksmith. I don't know if you cover rough mines. Oh, you are a locksmith. I can, uh, you cover the rough mines. Where's your phone number? You don't have a phone number. Like, so when they find a, an ad that says locksmith, rough mines, and they click on it, comes through and says, looking for a locksmith in rough mines, question mark. They go, yeah, I am. Oh, thank God. Here's a phone number. Gives a ring. They're like, oh, I want to ring you now. Because they're so frustrated. They cannot find it. So just go, th go through that exercise yourself. I did that. Recently. I did yeah. that recently for it. I wasn't doing AdWords for the guy. I, I was doing some um, web development for for a company, and they were into uh, added conversions. And I was just researching keywords, doing a bit of basic SEO on 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 the site for them. And uh, that was exactly what was going on. It was like um, searching for added conversions a particular geographic location, and going to landing pages that were just didn't relate. Uh, Related to, to my search term, and as far as they were did it addicts, but it wasn't like the location. It was like uh, home pages with like too way too much information, completely cluttered. Yeah. It was like is, is this, and you're like you're you're looking at the page one. Is this what I was looking for? Yeah. So I did a little video on this, kind of like a bit of a skit. It's like five minutes long. I'll we'll, we'll link to it again in your blog, um, yeah. and it's basically so I'm a, I'm looking for a plumber. Not for fun. I'm not on Facebook going, oh, this is interesting. Look at that Caribbean cruise. I might click through to that. I don't go to Google looking for a plumber or a locksmith or a, or a, a personal injury lawyer for fun. This is not for fun. So I land on your page, and I want to read that you've been in business since 1975, and you've got three bands, and you've got these all these certifications and blah. No, I don't. I don't. Do I want to download your ebook on how to find a plumber? No, I don't want to do that either. Do I want to even send you an email? No, because I don't think you're going to reply. I just want to ring you, please. That's why I did the search. So, and like, if you're a business owner like myself, you probably want to speak to people. That's how you're going to convert them. As soon as you get an email, you're going to try and get them on the phone straight away. And a lot of people looking for local businesses want to want to speak to them. They don't want to fire off an email because they're used to not nobody replying to them. But I, I went looking for washing repairs in Bedford, somewhere in England, recently. And I, I was filling in, trying to fill in the form, and I clicked send, and it was broke. It didn't even work. I thought, like, what is going on? And I did a few more. And then the next day, I'm like, five had sent. I only got one reply. Right. I was like, hold on. This is, uh, I, I just want, and people are used to that experience. And then, like I said, it's not Google's fault. It's yeah. for us business owners with our rubbish websites where we don't, and, you know, our rubbish AdWords campaign. So they search for this. We promise them something different than the ad. They go, oh, okay. And they click on that. And then we give them something completely different on the landing page. And they're just like, and they just go and click on everything, getting annoyed. And by the time they finally find you, Greg, and go oh my god there he is he's he covers that location that i've just said you pinged it yeah yeah and and you give the phone number it's there or you have a form and it doesn't say submit at the bottom of the button show us, says, form. Show, show us that form uh andy that you had you, you know the form you showed me uh, uh gosh i'll have to 
Oh, let me try and bring up. Basically, I'll bring, yeah. I'll bring up um, a different one. I'm going to close out here. I got to. Okay. I'll, Listen, I'll, thanks for the I'll questions. be still here, though. I just got right, right. to take two minutes. Thank you very much for the questions. Thank they're, you for they're the really answers. Getting, they're the same. Same as everybody asks. <laughs> it's the same stuff. I have to re-download that words editor. Got the link there for you in the in the uh, live chat on the on the right of your screen. Okay, there. I'll sign up for the uh, the uh, tutorial too. Sure. Sure. Appreciate it, guys. Nice All right, one. thanks, Greg. Come here. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad on that typing on my phone. Don't worry about it. We, but you're talking. You're basically talking about including a uh, a contact form of a, a very relevant uh, and upfront center page contact form on the landing page yeah, yeah. what well, when somebody's looking for washing machine repairs you can kick me out on the why it's not closing okay, no worries thanks see you later we're right back i think we're all, i think this website's down oh well right what what i find works really well is the hit a page You've got a relevant headline that I, they're going to say yes to. So, for instance, looking for washing machine repairs in Dublin. Yes, I am. Thank God. Found you. And then you might have three to five, three bullet points saying, oh, no call-out charge. We yeah. fix all makes, 24-7 call-out, or whatever, evening and weekends. You know, just a few little things. And then on the phone, tap to call, make it easy. Instead of like, oh, I've got a copy and paste and do it. Or a little button that says request a callback. Right. Not send a message, get a quote, or blah, blah, blah. Request a callback. Oh, somebody's going to ring me back. That's, oh, I like that. Right. I don't even have to pay for that. That's brilliant. So yeah. request a callback. Then it just asks your name, your email, your phone number, your message. And then the button isn't submit because, like, we're not wrestling or anything. It's not submit. <laughs> I don't get it. Why submit? It's request a callback. That's what's yeah. going to happen. I request a callback. So that's what you click on. Exclamation mark! Yeah, call me. Yeah, and um, um, I, I kind of like to use the same. Like the, the, top of the, the top of the form, it might be um, get a quote as a top top of your form. The button yeah. is get a quote because some people just don't read it. They just don't read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to ask you there. Uh, let's maybe talk about products because um, I know we had um, we who did we have at the start of the the show there? We had uh, Mary uh, who was selling. Uh, jewelry so yeah. let's maybe take what we're talking about and apply it to a product yeah okay so again you want to be really tight if you're already running an adwords campaign and you, it's not performing for you and you're losing money go into the account look at the search terms pick ones but look cut out stuff that's lose that's obviously not what you want because you're not mm -hmm. selling that product okay and then if like if you've got a bleeding neck and you just need to stem the bleed take five a handful of keywords search terms search terms sorry that have decent volume yeah, right, there's a difference in case you yeah. didn't know that all right <laughs> yeah so even i like got it wrong I'll take those search terms the exact so that's what they type in take the good ones so like celtic wedding rings that's quite a that's quite short head you know there's going to be a lot of people typing that it's going to be quite competitive maybe if you find a longer tail one potentially and try and own it so what i mean by the reason i said take a five take a handful is you're going to take them out create a campaign put them all into this new campaign post the old ones or you know depending migrate over slowly whichever if, if and you're going to write the best ad and you're going to run an exact match which means having square brackets around that search term so, so your keyword now supposedly matches exactly the search term. It doesn't anymore. Google changed it so exact match is no longer exact match. I find that really frustrating. It can allow misspellings. That's all right. Okay. But then it sometimes allows like kind of close variants that aren't quite what you want. Mm. So be careful of that. Keep looking at your search terms even when you're bidding exact match and then add negatives of things that aren't what you want. Like, for instance, New York photography, New York photographers, I don't know, like, does Google think they're the same or not anymore? Are they close variants, mm. according to Google? Because New York photography could be looking somebody looking for a skyline. New York photographers could be somebody looking for me. I'm a photographer. So I don't want... Uh, 
um, how, I was going to ask you someday, you kind of triggered something with me. Um, uh, oh, it's gone. It'll come back to me. Sorry, Jinder. Okay, so the trick with, with all of this that you might notice is to keep focusing, is to focus and put all your energy into a few, into one place instead of okay. spread across. Right. Because if you imagine it's just like a big trampoline. Yes. Okay, and you're trying to make a dent. Everybody's trying to make a dent in this. And you've got this big wooden ball on it. It's not going to make a dent because it's like it's just not dense. It just sits on it. But if you put all your weight behind a spike, yeah, and right, you'll put more energy into that little part, that little B word search term. Your ad is lovely and created, and everyone else is just bleh, just throwing it up across everything. That you're going to beat everybody, and you've got to you're just trying to get through, burst this trampoline or burst the ice. Whatever it is, I visualize it like you're over, over a, a big ice lake. You're trying to get through. You've got to get through in one place yeah. first. Get profitable there. Right, so potentially for uh, for products, it's again, one keyword per ad group. Okay. Possibly exact match. Right, the reason why I'm going like this is because the product you're up against e-commerce. You're in the e-commerce space. E-commerce yeah. people are typically better at AdWords than... Okay. the average solicitor and plumber and whatnot because they're already online also you only need like i said in the uk for instance if you're selling red sneakers in the uk you're you're competing you only have to there only has to be 10 good competitors across the whole of the uk and you've got a full complement of really good ads yeah. so to yeah. go head to head with anybody you have to yeah, just put all your effort in one little thing so mary would and, and people like mary were selling products online uh, that are, are sellable internationally should maybe pick the largest market like the US and pick a city in the US and and become uh, focused on that make that work and then spread out possibly that's a good strategy yes is to um, just pick Chicago for instance and then make your ad but IP target campaign to Chicago yeah. then mention Chicago in the ad because they will yeah. stand out compared to everyone else. And who else is going to have a Chicago ad when they're selling wedding rings to the whole of the US? Yeah. That's, that's a strategy. And you could just you could have um, free delivery to Chicago. Maybe you've got free delivery everywhere in the US, yeah. but you say free delivery yeah. to Chicago. Yeah. And then the landing page you mentioned is got is Chicago specific, just to see if you can get it working better. And yeah. so Mary, if you're if she's selling stuff throughout the whole of the US, could maybe pick a top seller and go, Oh, I wonder if we could try even just that segmenting it making the ads specific by location and then the landing page just try it for something that's got enough volume to be worth to justify you know the expense of create and time creating the ads and the landing pages then obviously with adwords other things to look at is google shopping google product listing ads okay um which you can see like if you do looking for a product you'll often see the image ads gotcha. above okay so they work very well compared to the text ads they get a lot of eyeballs so definitely be having a go at that. I personally don't run those. I've had a little go. It's not my thing. Like I said, my thing is to is for local yeah. stuff. Local I really stuff. like doing that stuff because like well, electricians and plumbers. And yeah, you know, I'm married into a family of uh, tradespeople. Yeah, I mean you get you, you can get results pretty quickly given that the competition really doesn't know enough about how best to target their ads. So you can yeah get results yeah, quickly. but. Well, just okay. So, if I was looking at a wedding rings campaign account and it was targeted in the US, I would be looking to see what are the top search terms that are generating conversions. Okay, I'd, I'd, I'd be looking. I'd be interested in taking the top five. What gets you the most impressions? Are they good ones? Get rid of the ones that aren't good, because if they're getting loads of impressions, potentially not many clicks, it's just ruining your click-through rate for the whole account. Yeah. Okay, get rid of those. Are there ones with loads of impressions but not many clicks? The click-through rate isn't good, but they're good. Oh, these are good search terms, but the, we're not getting many clicks. What can you do? Can you write a better ad for them? So you might have like, uh, you know, thousands of search terms. Don't try and work on all of them. Just pick the top five. That's right. sorted by impressions. What am I going to do with those? Sort them, then sort them by clicks. What am I going to do with these? And then sort them by cost. Uh-oh. <laughs> and maybe they're not always the same ones. And then sort by conversions. Right. Out of my whole account, these top five are driving most of my conversions. 
Well, I, literally, I've looked in one a girl's account when we were in that big team, and she had a hundred thousand keywords, and she was in messing every day, creating different ads and changing them. And I was like sat there next to her, said, "Right, let's look at the search terms." And it was in Japanese as well, so I, 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 she had to translate everything. I <laughs> said, "Right, find the search terms wherever that is." She clicked, found the search terms. I said, "Right, what's Sorry, the search?" Not... Sorry, Andy. I know. Uh, we can't see you. We only see your picture, so maybe you can hear us there. Oh, he's maybe coming through. I'll just finish this quick story, and then uh, now I can ask the question. Um, so, of her search, hundred thousand keywords. We looked at the search terms. Remember, the search terms aren't the same as keywords, and there's more search terms than hundred thousand. And the top search term accounted for ninety-nine percent of all the traffic clicks, visitors to mm -hmm. the website, and that search term wasn't even in the account. It was right. being picked up by a broad match keyword that didn't match it, wasn't the same. And the ad wasn't 100% relevant because, and I think it was to do with airport parking or something, and the keyword was something different, and the ad was something different. I was like, right, what you could do is turn everything off, create one keyword, <laughs> that's exact match of that search term, and create an ad for that, work on that, and if you can double the click-through rate, you've doubled the whole account, the volume going through. That's pretty big. Like it's something you, you, you maybe perceive as small as you could miss it, but has such yeah. a huge impact on your, yeah. on your result. It's yeah. just it's just plain old 80-20. 80-20. Yeah. But it like, I've, it's not 80-20 when you did this online. It's 99-1. 99% of traffic is going to come from 1% of your keywords. Yeah. So yeah. you need to know what those keywords are, and you need to lovingly, lovingly craft an ad and site links and call-outs and everything that you can do that your competitors are not doing to make yeah. your ad stand out and it looks better and it just in oh, Chicago free delivery to Chicago that's brilliant no other ad says that then the landing page potentially says that like if you find that that works then shove it on the landing page as well yeah. I'm a big fan of doing we're, we're going to we, we've got an AdWords tutorial uh, AdWords training um, coming up and uh, we'll run through all of that uh, uh, Andy was talking about how to structure that and get that holy trinity humming on your account um, and there's a link there you can see it right here down the bottom and also in the in the live chat you want to click mm -hmm. on that and sign up and um, it's free to it's free to join it's it'll be an hour of your time i think it'd be very beneficial um, and we'll break yeah. we'll break down we'll break down the elements of what andy was talking about okay is, is mary still on is it is, or is anybody on at the minute who does who sells products rather than a, a service locally and do they did what I say make sense to them? Are they going to be able to go away and take action on it? Look for the, the top few, um, or do they have any other questions? Just wondering. I think if you put slash Q, you can you can type a question in down in the message box. Um, Niall, uh, oh Kerry man, if you want to give that another go, maybe dialing in, or if you have a specific question, we can't dial in. Bang it in the in the message thing down there. If you see down the bottom of your screen on the right hand side, there's a send message, and just go forward slash Q, and then your question will get it. Or just type it in the chat; you'll still get it. Um, so, what, what's springing to your to mind for you, Larry, when you think about your previous AdWords campaigns that you run? That well, you there, was, there was no there was no thought like I my last campaigns I ran for for that particular business was probably about a year and a half ago. Uh, and um, generally now I just focus on the content and, and uh, building audience, audiences organically. Uh, but um, as far as that relates to pay-per-click and, and paying for, for visitors, I think the two, of them work well, the two of them can work very well together. Uh, I mean, ultimately, you, you want to be bringing traffic to your site for free, but... Um, I, I, that holy trinity you spoke about is is huge. Um, yeah. and the but what you're effect. doing, when you're doing content marketing, remember we were talking about some people have got information-seeking keyword. Actually, I'll give an example. Let's say my wife comes home and goes, let's go to the Champagne region of France. She's heard about it in work. And I'm like, uh, where? Okay. And I'm like, right, I, I want to please, please the missus. So for the next few nights, I'm going to, okay, let's go. I'm going to be typing in. I don't know anything about this place. Uh, actually, I don't. <laughs> I'm going to type in Champagne region, France. That keyword, if you've got a B&B &B in France, in the Champagne region of France, that keyword, there's no point you putting a B&B &B ad in front of me yet. Yeah. Because when I type in Champagne region, France, I obviously know nothing. 
yeah to be even typing that in I, 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 yeah a, a student types that in somebody's looking to learn i'm looking to learn so i type that in i'm in research mode that's an information seeking search term it indicates i know nothing about the champagne region right? sure, yeah. then i learn about different areas and i start typing in those areas within you know i don't know any but and that that but over the course of a few nights or an hour online, I'm educating myself. Yeah. I'm dragging myself up I like a hill. Okay, right, I'm just trying to draw this like a, a hill. So at the bottom, I'm, a brow, I'm browsing. Mm, Champagne region, France. I've got my cup of tea. Mm, that's interesting. Then I, like, I've got the tray. I've got the sniff now, the, the scent now, sorry. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I'm starting to type in, okay, that would be interesting. And I go to that place and oh look there's a there's a landmark here and there's this and there's that oh this is the best vineyard and that's digital i'm now researching okay i might have a pen and paper next to me i'm making little notes so i've got a cup of coffee originally and then i'm like i'm now a bit more focused my search to i my, I make, my behavior has changed i'm no longer browsing i'm researching hmm. i'm in research mode and then i might start going okay i like the sound of this i can make a trip out of this what about flights how, how much are flights there uh, where do where's the airport do i need to get car hire where am i going to stay and at some point i'm going to become a shopper i'm going to shop around for well okay if i get a hotel how much is that going to cost and if i get a bnb how much oh jeepers they're expensive maybe a bit further out what's that like so i'm i'm, I'm becoming a bit of a shopper like okay that's that's got that's red shoes and that's blue you know i'm i'm, and I'm sticking them i've got them in my head and at that stage, I'm very close to falling over the hill. Okay, right. maybe I already am. When I type in uh, B and B, Champagne region, France, I'm now looking for some I, place. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. I've got my phone in my hand, or I'm not about to like fill in the form. I now want to speak to them. So I imagine that at some point I start with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. I'm just browsing. Oh, this is interesting. Then I've got a pen and paper. I've, become, I've gone into research mode. Then I'm like, right, I need to speak to somebody. I've decided, and um, that hotel, right, hi, do you have a room for such and such? Okay, so the search term that they type, I originally typed in, if you think about it, the search continuum of search terms I typed in, the first one indicated I knew nothing about the place. Then I got more and more educated about the different types, of, and then the, the, and all the locations and when they're open. So I'm look, I, I didn't know any of that earlier. What you're doing potentially, okay, so let's try to say this. I think if you're going to run an AdWords campaign, you start with the buyers, the people who are, they've educated themselves. There's yeah. no point trying to sell to somebody who's trying to educate themselves. They're not ready to buy it. No, not they're really. educating now. They're falling down the hill. Yeah. You just have to position yourself at the bottom of the hill and catch them and go, yes, welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, start yeah. there, get profitable. Then get savvy and go, right, okay, people, there's a lot of people searching for stuff related to Champagne region, France, but not a and b yet. There's yeah. a ton of people looking for that location, which is just up the road from me. Maybe I could write, what, what, would they, what are they looking for? Information, though. Maybe I could write an article about that what, and give them what they're looking for at that stage in their search. Yeah. Give them information about that. Maybe give them a little, you know, download this little here's white paper. Thing, here's the thing, what you're saying. It, the, the, the more you happen to appear, in their in their uh, you know browsing and research mode uh, as you as, they, as you appear in searches either organically or in in adwords if you can afford yeah. to pay uh, to to um create ads or campaigns that that link through to articles when then great but um the more you appear essentially in their in that person's search the more uh, credible you will be in their eyes when it, when they have when they come to that point where they have the credit card in their hand to actually make a purchase like oh there he is again there yeah. she is again. Yeah, yeah. go there straight yeah. away. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So in that search continuum, God, I'd like to draw this, but I think I'll probably <laughs> make a mess of it. As as they keep finding you, so they find you and they read about the Champagne region in France or this a sub region. You go, oh, okay, what are you going to do? Picture what you do yourself. You go back to Google and type in a new search based on what you've just learned. As you get deeper down this rabbit hole, and if you find that site again. You go, oh, okay, learn that. And, it, and right, the thing about Google is, like I said, it's the elephant in the room is, yeah, they're brilliant. They've indexed the, the world yeah. and brilliant search engine. 
the user experience, not through any fault of Google. For us, it's like it's quite tedious. It's like I've typed this in, now I'm trying to find the best result. And you're scanning and like so you're going from reading this great content, you go back to Google, scanning, back to just you would love to keep eventually it's like, you know what? I keep finding Larry's website. It's like Uncle Larry knows this. But why don't I just stay on his website and yeah. read and learn there instead of going, keep going back to forwards to Google and see all these weird websites and not finding what I want. This guy seems to know exactly what I'm looking for. He's telling me everything about Champagne Reading Fast, all the things I could do, places to stay, car hire, what, yeah. best things to do. do, 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 do. Oh, and he's, and he's got like a list of the best hotels and the whatnot and his B&B and, or, or whatever. And that's, that would be really smart. But you start with catching them. They're coming running down the hill. Catch them first, and that's AdWords. And maybe you could also try AdWords where you send people to an information page if it's an information-seeking search term. No point trying to get them to book your B&B yeah. when they're looking for well, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. And then your play is the content marketing part of giving them the information. There's, obviously, there's a load more people searching for information than that. People look for information than that are ready to buy. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the, depends on the industry or it depends on the product or service. But uh, uh, definitely for me, like you're the expert on the on the on the paid traffic side of things, but uh, definitely fr from my perspective, if you're if you can do both, you can produce the content that people are looking for in order to educate themselves. Yeah. And then you 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 produce, let's say, an ad that relates to their um, need or intent to purchase. Now, yeah. well then now you you you're keeping the balance, and you're actually bringing in you're bringing in traffic organically as well as you are paying. Yeah. And and that's the key. Yeah. Well, they um okay search engine marketing is seo which is the organic listing and it's paid because you've got paid and you've got the organic stuff on the search engine that's why it's called search engine marketing but they're both the two sides of the same coin yes okay so when i run adwords campaigns i get to find out by a bit in kind of modified broad plus window plus repairs plus doubling and i find a particular search term out of all the search that is high volume and works really well in exact match, we go, hmm, because that's what search term is. Right, let's, like, let's write some content around that and try and get ranked yeah. for that. But if you were to just write content, you wouldn't yeah. know which search no, terms are the highest volume, what's the most valuable, yeah. what's the best. So the AdWords campaign tells you the search terms. Yeah. And then, yeah. Ammo, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and then when you create the, the, the article, you might wait for a while for Google to index it, or you might just, like you say, create an ad and send people direct to it. Want to learn about it? Send them straight there. They read it. Now you can re maybe retarget, add them to a remarketing list so that over the next course of the next week, an ad keeps popping up, following them around or Gmail or whatever, even on Facebook, and saying, hi, are you interested in uh, coming to the Champagne Region of France? And like, you know, okay, okay, click through. Book the holiday now. Yeah. So, yeah, it all, it all dovetails into each other. But listen, um, we're going just over an hour, uh, and it's been very informative. I, I, you know, I hope hope everyone listening in or whatever, either either now live or later or on the podcast later, get some good value from it. We'll include um, links and a couple of screenshots and your the video you mentioned, Andy. Yeah. Uh, showing people how to um, I can't remember what it was. But, uh, we'll how how to chat. use Excel to bulk upload Excel. stuff. Excel. You'll be doing what. 99% of other advertisers are not doing, right? Yeah. If you use Excel to build your campaigns. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, You'll be doing what like, the pros, AdWords specialists do in agencies. Okay. And not all of those are that good at it, even, to be honest. Yeah. 